I just had to freaking rush because I got home at like maybe 7.15. I had to find a clean shirt because I don't, I don't have any freaking clean laundry. Uh, but the pre has been taken. And I'm ready to go to the gym. I, um, I forgot I moved the Berserk air freshener to the other car for a second. So I'll give you this as a little bit of a throwback for now. And you can hardly see it, whatever. So plan for this back and rear delt day. I was kind of on the fritz between whether or not doing the lift at Planet Fitness or just staying home and doing a little home gym lift. So, I mean, technically it's not really confirmed that I can go to Planet Fitness because they're kind of, uh, I think they don't love the filming in there anymore. I don't know. I'll see. That was just word of mouth rumor I heard from some other dude I know. So maybe it'll be fine, but I'll probably get there at, I don't know, 740 something. First warm up, first uh, working set 750. That's about right. How are 10 minutes for back and rear delts? You know, a muscle group itself should never probably take longer than 45 minutes. Um, and I'm not saying that's a freaking law, but really, and that's, I'll say that for me. You know, if I'm spending more than 45 minutes on a single muscle group, like if I spend longer than 45 minutes, maybe an hour just on chest, then I'm probably taking a little bit extra long on my rest periods than I should, or I'm maybe doing too much volume. Now, obviously I don't think I'm doing too much volume, but maybe that's you, you know, I'll talk to some dudes and they'll tell me some shit. Like they've been in here for three hours and they're doing, you know, just destroying chest. I mean, you're probably just doing so much fluff work. You know, I used to do like, this is my mentality for a while when I was kind of a beginner and I still made gains. So it kind of just goes to show that a lot of shit works. But I was doing five movements and five sets for each movement for all body parts. So that would mean that my back and bicep workout was 25 sets of back and 25 sets of curls for biceps. Now, do I think that all of those sets were balls to the wall really intense? No, I do not. I was doing a lot of fluff work at the time because I would do, um, I think a lot of people kind of get this style where let's say they move on to one exercise to another, right? Typically you might start off with a light weight and do a set, go a little bit heavier, do another set, go a little heavier, go a little heavier. And then you do your top set on a movement. And I feel like those sets that you were doing, working up to that top set, I mean, sure, you're still doing work, right? You're still kind of wearing down the muscle, but why not just jump to that big one straight from the get go and don't do all these unnecessary kind of fluff sets I'm not saying you shouldn't warm up, but you know, I'm not going to go into the gym and do a set of 20 reps of pull downs with half the stack. And then a set of 15 reps of pull downs with a little heavier. And then a set of 10 with a little heavier, a set of 10 with a little heavier. I'm going to do a proper warm up, right? Get exposed to the weight. You know, my biceps are going to come into play. Maybe I'll do some cable curls to make sure my whole little forearm joint, everything else is warm. Maybe do some rotator cuff activations, whatever. Then, you know, sure, I'll start with that same half the stack of the pull down and I'll do maybe like three reps, right? Get exposed to the weight, but don't tire myself out. And then I'll go a little heavier. And then I'll go a little heavier, a little heavier, all the while only doing like one or two reps just, you know, until I feel nice and warm. And then for my top set, I won't be super exhausted from doing a bunch of fluff and I can really get started, you know? In my mind, lats, chest, even, well, it gets a little funky because sometimes I like starting off with squeezing, kind of burning movements with light weight. And then for something like chest, I want to start off with heavy movements like bench. But, you know, for back, I want to start off with something heavy when I'm fresh because I want to hit my lats with a lot of tension on what I assume to be heavy pull downs. Now, right now, this is kind of hypothetical. Because if I can't record in there, then whatever. Fuck it. I'll just come back to the basement gym and do my back day at home. But I think it'll be fine. So let's, uh, I'm starting to feel the beta alanine. It kind of, it hits me kind of in my cheeks. And then it sort of spreads out across my face to my ears and a little bit at the back of my head. The beta alanine, you know, I'm inclined to believe it's going to do a little something for you. 
that is for sure but it takes some freaking time because it's like creatine in the sense that you have to load it so you won't really get the full effects of you know taking it until about like you know a couple of weeks of taking it consistently that always kind of off put me because i don't i mean i don't love the tingly feeling but i'm actually going to try it now so perhaps i'll get some more endurance i'll be able to just force out a couple more reps on these sets so let's uh let's just cut to either set one of pull downs or the basement so we'll see what happens all right so not my typical attire these are just the pants i was freaking wearing today i uh, i didn't i didn't i didn't freaking pack enough clothes and i haven't done my laundry but fucking pants with a belt cargo whatever i'm still gonna get a freaky back pump come on we know this so full stack with a plate perfect starter let's just get started Ah, fuck it. Oh. All right, let's get rid of this friggin' plate. Let's just do two more here. Definitely not feeling my peak strength, but that was still a good set. All right. I'll go a little bit wider for this one. Not because I think you need to go super wide or like a really wide grip is going to activate more lats. Usually I kind of just like to go shoulder distance, but sometimes I want to go a little wider just to change it up. <clears throat> Oh, Jesus, dude. Whew. Oh, fuck. Let's, um... Lats are feeling pretty pumped. Let's do some single arm cable rows. I think that'll feel good for my next movement. Okay, so for one thing, the dumbbells at this gym only go up to 75, so I can't do a good set. Well, okay, I take that back. I could do a good set of bent over rows with the 75s but it's kind of light. I don't want to go a little heavier. And then just in general, I kind of like doing single arm rows with a cable because with all these fancy pulleys and whatever else, you can't build up any momentum. Like if I were to sit here with a dumbbell, I could rip it at the bottom and it would just kind of float up at the top. But since these cables are kind of moving the weight, I mean, at half speed of what I'm pulling it at, I can't build up so much momentum in them. So even if I do quick reps, the tension is still constant. You understand? Like, and you get it. So let's just do two sets here. Maybe three if I like it. We'll see.
Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. Let's do some seated cable rows next. In contrast to that last set of single arm rows, uh, I was going to do a lighter controlled set, real slow, real good squeeze, but I kind of want to do a heavier throw the, throw the weight around set instead. So I think, eh, okay, no. Best of both worlds, I'll do a drop set. So start off heavy, kind of throw the weight around, manhandle it, then drop the weight. Real good contraction squeeze. You know, I think doing your sets in both of those styles and maybe an even mix ish, it's good for you. Well, as long as you go hard, no matter what sort of fucking sets you do, it's good for you. <laughs> Okay. All right, fine. You know, I think that's enough rowing. Let's finish with a lap bias set of something and then go check the back pump. All right, so now I'll do a drop set lap bias. So instead of doing like an actual drop set where you start with heavy weight and then move on to lighter weight, like I just did. I guess this is actually more so of a pre-exhaust style drop set, or super set, whatever. So I'll pre-exhaust my lats with single arm pullovers. I'll do, you know, six reps on the right side, six on the left, six on the right, back and forth a couple times till I feel pretty fatigued. And then jump onto the pull down with, you know, half of the stack, basically, and just really finish off the lats. A lot of pull downs on this fucking back day, but I think the pump is gonna be just as impressive as normal. So let's go check it out. All right, so back is now fully pumped. Let's get a little, just a through the shirt lat spread before we check out the real deal. Ooh. Oh. Whew. For literally freaking, I guess I had a little bit of carbs. I had a couple protein bars, but for no dedicated carb sources today, I feel pretty freaking pumped. I'd probably attribute a little bit of that to uh, just the fact that I drink a lot of electrolyte packets. So I'm pretty well hydrated and fully, uh, let's just say satiated with electrolytes. Ooh, so I'm not gonna take the shirt all the way off cause I'm just gonna have to put it back on. But let's get a little lat spread going first. Okay, what the fuck am I talking about? There we go. All right. 
Oh, jeez. All right, let's get the same thing from the back and then get back in there. Oh. Oh, jeez, dude. Hey. Let's get one more little something and then actually get out of here. I'm trying to really get my lats stretched out in that one. But, I mean, what can I say? The back is pumped. So let's go spam a variety of rear delt movements. Maybe even just one. I don't know. We'll have to see. And come back for another pose down before we get out of here. All right. So I don't typically recommend anybody start off anything on their shoulders. I guess front delts for pressing is fine. But typically, I don't say you should start off super heavy. But... You know, I feel pretty strong in the reverse pec deck. So let's just throw some shit around. So the first couple sets will be more brutish, a lot of tension, right? Just kind of pumping out reps. But then maybe I could drop the weight by, I mean, even half and go slower and really squeeze and do more of a burning set like that. So let's just do three or four here. Then who knows? Maybe I'll just stay here for the whole rear delt workout. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Let's, um, hmm. Let's do some bent over dumbbell lateral raises. All right, so like I was saying, bent over rear delts. I mean, it's the same logic as sitting here vertically, right? Doing side laterals. I just bend over and now I'm hitting rear delts, right? Like imagine this. I'm literally just doing a fucking reverse pec deck, but I'm bent over and I'm holding the dumbbells. All right, you see how it's the same motion? Even though it's a little different, I'm still pretty much hitting them in the same way. So I think two here, and maybe a face pull. We'll see. All right. heavier for the next one. Okay, so this is a little bit funky. Usually I do say to do your laying face pulls on like a bench, but by now I've pretty much fatigued my rear delts. So I only need a little bit of weight. I'm just trying to really pump them up. So I'll do some single arm standing face pulls. And the weight is so light, I'm not worried about having to balance it. But with these, it's gonna be especially important for you to actually be able to flex your rear delt specifically. Because, you know, the novice lifter could just do this movement and it would just be a fucking trap biased row, right? So I'm trying to keep my shoulder, like this little 
shoulder cuff, whatever, in the same spot and only rotate my arm, right? Because then what that's going to mean is the only thing flexing is my fucking rear delt. So two sets of this, really just trying to fill up the rear delts with blood, and then we go check the pump. delts freaking pumped so for one thing dude just a little anecdote before we go pose down rear delts neglected causing people to have you know not as awesome looking shoulders as they could plus dude developed rear delts are just gonna make your shoulder tougher somebody with big rear delts is gonna be less prone to injury well it depends on how much of an asshole they are when they're training but for the most part I'd say someone with developed rear delts is also going to have a pretty strong rotator cuff, right? Just the action of a face pull, you're kind of getting some shit worked on the inside of your shoulder too, not just this cool, fancy part on the outside. So, I mean, you got no reason to skip them, man. Come on. And big rear delts, dude, just makes your fucking shoulder fully capped. So let's go check it out shirtless and get in the car. There we go. All right, let's just make this quick before we uh, get kicked out for staying too late. Oh my goodness. So yeah, this right here is what I'm talking about. How it's creeping over the top of my tricep, right? That is what you're freaking looking for. And then just standing, like not even doing a rear delt flex. They, you can still see them fucking poking out. And then in a reverse uh, lat spread, extra freaky. <sighs> okay. Oh. All right, they're, uh, I think it's like 9.03. They close at 9. Let's get in the car. Thank you, Planet Fitness. You never fail to come in clutch when I need you most. Because, like I was saying, the other gyms I wanted to go to today close at freaking 6. Now, there is an Anytime Fitness, which, I mean, I hear is a decent gym. But I have never really heard, and I don't, I don't want this to be slander, you know, this is just hearsay. But I've never heard great things about their policies in terms of, like, the contracts and the, the memberships and whatever. Plus, it's kind of a fucking hassle because you can't just set it up online. You have to go in there during staffed hours, and they're only staffed for like from like noon to four or something. And by the time I remember to go in, it's like it's fucking eight o'clock, you know. So potentially, maybe I'm just an asshole, and Anytime Fitness is badass. But I don't know, whatever. I probably should go in there and get a little membership because even though Planet Fitness is usually twenty four hour. I'm pretty sure they did a whole fucking like chain wide switch up from going from 24 hour to 24 five. So 24 hours, five days a week. And then on the weekend, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on Friday, they close at nine too. not good, man. I've had a I don't want to say um, I could count it on maybe one or two hands the amount of times that I've driven to the Planet Fitness. Forgot that they closed at nine or something, and then I had to come back home and do my little home lift. But then flip it around, look at that more of an optimist. That means I can count on both hands how many times having a home gym has saved me and I've been able to get a good lift. Oh, dude, that would, uh, oh, geez. 
That is not ideal. That's not an awesome state to be in. You've already taken your pre, you're already hyped up. You kind of already envisioned what your lift is going to be in that particular gym. And then you show up and they're closed. Yikes. You know, that happened one time. I, uh, I think it was probably two years ago ish, something like that. Winter time, at least two winters ago. Um, there was a snowstorm real bad fucking roads closed school closed. So whatever, I look it up. Well, I didn't look it up. I just knew that Planet Fitness is 24 hour. So, you know, I get in my car, I drive what would normally be a 10 minute drive to a Planet Fitness, not this one, but another one. Um, so I drive my little usual 10 minute drive turned into 30 going super slow on the fucking snow, trying not to fucking spill it, whatever. And then I get there. I've already drank in my pre at this point. I'm already getting excited for, um, I don't remember what I did. I feel like it was maybe legs. It doesn't matter. But I show up to the to the gym, closed. Obviously, because there's a fucking snow emergency. Nobody could show up. Uh, so I'm strapped. I'm like, fuck. Am I going to have to go back home? And <laughs> I didn't want to just skip the workout. In my mind, I was like, damn, okay. I got to go back to the dorm. And I got to do a body weight leg workout. <laughs> You know, and I probably would have figured something out for sure. Like I would have done some sissy squats or maybe like loaded up my backpack full of stuff or whatever, done some kind of hamstring curl by like strapping something on my foot. I don't even know. But luckily, you know, I fucking look up on Google Maps, find a gym nearby that was 24 hours as well. And I just freaking showed up there. It saved me. So not really sure how I got on that story tangent, but whatever. Yeah, I got to do a total fucking reroute of what I was about to say. I don't even. Blah. So basic plan for when I get home is to. Hmm. I don't know what I want to eat. I am not exactly certain what I want to eat. Let me look at the. Let me check my macros. Let me see how much food I have left for the day. Holy shit. I've got freaking. Oh my god, I had like nothing to eat today. Ooh, I gotta catch up. I've only damn 120 grams of protein, 30 of fat, and 70 of carbs. I can kind of eat whatever the heck I want. So I'll probably cook up a couple of steaks. I've got two pounds worth of top sirloin I got a couple of days ago. Pretty lean cut. Honestly, I might just cook up both of those. That'll hit me on the protein perfectly. I'm not going to eat them all at once. I'll kind of scratch at it till I go to bed. And then, I don't know. I got a lot of carbs left. I could have a little pack of ramen if I want. Very nice. You know, the whole point, the whole, uh, the whole purpose of dieting in a weight loss context, it's not about eating like conventionally healthy foods. You know, dieting does not mean one-to-one -one directly that you're just going to eat salads and chicken and rice and you, get, you can have no soda, you can have no nothing, just water. That's not what it means, right? What it really means is you have to eat less calories than your body burns in a single day. You know, so whether I get my fucking 25-ish hundred calories from, you know, steaks, rice, maybe what else have I been eating? Holy shit, what else have I been eating? I've been doing a lot of pre-mixed salads. Oh yeah, egg whites. Uh, that's damn yeah, that's pretty much it. Not that much, but I. So yeah, right. I could get all my calories from that, or you know, I could eat. I could be eating a fucking pack of Skittles and protein shakes, whatever. Um, a little bit of a side note: not all protein is built the same. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's let's just move on. But you know, I could get all my calories from fucking cinnamon toast crunch, donuts, sugar sweets, whatever, fucking ice cream. But if I still hit my little 2,500 calorie limit, which is, you know, a calorie deficit for me, then I would still lose body fat. So that is not the way you should go about it. If I were to just eat sweets, I would hit my fucking 2,500 calorie mark like that, you know, by like one o'clock. And then I'm screwed for the rest of the day. I'm going to be fucking starving. More likely than not, I'm going to end up just overeating. Because it's fucking hard to be hungry, man. So, 
it's going to be in your best interest to be a little bit smarter with the shit you eat, right? Eat some stuff that's a bit more filling. It doesn't have so many calories, right? Get some riced cauliflower packets. Get some fucking low carb keto bread or keto tortillas or powdered peanut butter. And then you reconstitute it with some fucking zero calorie syrup. Turn that into a sweet little treat with some zero calorie or not zero calorie, but low calorie jelly. Make a fucking diet friendly PB and J, you know, stuff like that. So I'm really rambling right now. Whatever. Back is pumped. Rear delts got pumped as well. Now I'm going to go eat. Then I'm going to go to sleep, man. Cardio in the morning. And then tomorrow is going to be an arm day. Arms never fails to be a good pump. But I mean, if we're really looking back, <laughs> can you remember the last time I did a lift? And during the pose down, I got to say, wow, this pump was fucked. This pump was so crap. Mm. That was an awful lift. You know, I can't remember the last time that freaking happened. So uh, eat your food, get a decent amount of sleep, stay hydrated and have a good mentality and going into the gym. It's going to be fucking hard not to get a good pump. So that's all I got to say. I'll see you next time.